start by talking a little bit about kind of my background and, and how I landed here in Orange County. Uh, the Board of Supervisors a year and a half ago, uh, Supervisor Doe created the Director of Care Coordination position. At that time, I was working in the city of Long Beach and I had been doing homeless services coordinating not just in the city of Long Beach for the past 14 and a half years, but also working within the 88 cities of the county of Los Angeles. And if you ever read the newspaper of what's happening of homelessness in Orange County or in, in LA County uh, with Prop H and all the work that's going on there, I participated pretty significantly in the development of all of that uh, before it actually got passed by the voters. Um, so I'm pretty familiar not just with what's happening in LA, but what's happening in the region. Um, me and a guy by the name of Joe Coletti. Urban Institute for Research up in uh, Echo Park, Los Angeles, created a Southern California Alliance of Continuum of Care Leadership. Continuum of Care is the HUD programs that many jurisdictions fund. It's, it's kind of that system of care for homeless services from street outreach, emergency shelter, transitional shelter, permanent housing, employment, all the different programs within that. So I've been meeting with all of these groups for probably the past 10 to 12 years. And we just met on Friday, and I have to say, where's Jim, there he is. Um, what an amazing group of leaders we have in Southern California. Uh, but I wanna say that you know when I saw what the board was doing in Orange County, and I grew up in Orange County, and I currently live here, but I didn't always live here. I lived in Long Beach for a little period of time while I was working there. Um, but I always followed what was happening in Orange County, um, and I felt like when I was in when I was in Long Beach, we had achieved so much um, with the naval base closure. We had ended veteran homelessness. We had done all of this great work, and I was reading about Orange County, and I thought, wow, they're creating a position in the county, working for the CEO's office to coordinate across all the county departments. I thought that is got my name on it. That's something I really am interested in. And I say that because working in a city government, you have kind of a sphere of what you can accomplish, right? You can do affordable housing. We had a health department. We had the VA hospital, which is also shared with Orange County. We had a number of things going on in the military base closure that we were able to achieve, I'd say probably more than most cities could do. Uh, because Long Beach was a very unique place. But coming down here to the County of Orange, in the year and a half I've been here, uh, the first part is as my former boss, who's actually the city manager of Dana Point, Mark Denny was my boss when I first arrived. And he had said to me, he said, you're coming in hot when you come into Orange County. I said, does that mean I'm no landing gear, no wheels down, just coming in hot on the runway? And you know, I didn't really fully grasp um, what was happening in Orange County from what you read versus what's actually happening. And so hopefully I can uh, talk to you a little bit about that. In my first 90 days, I did an assessment of the landscape. And I want to say that that assessment was primarily a new employee coming in with a tremendous amount of experience, not completely green, but new to Orange County wanting to just surveil the landscape and get a sense of where we were at and what we needed to do to take us to the next level. So I did an assessment on homelessness. I delivered that to the board. It was the first time uh, in my recollection that the Board of Supervisors had ever had a homeless study session. Um, so for 45 minutes, I basically went through my assessment and I had their full attention. Just you might imagine, 45 minutes with the Board of Supervisors, very challenging to accomplish. I had a full, full, um, audience of, of really supportive people who had contributed to the feedback that I used to create that assessment. How many of you have seen it, are aware of it, or read it? Only the people I know. <laughs> okay, well we have a little homework after today's meeting. Um, go to the Office of Care Coordination at the CEO's office and you will find not just that assessment, but monthly reports and, and uh, assessment or uh, newsletters kind of, of, of where we've come uh, in the year and a half that I've been here. And I wanna just kind of, this is my opening remark, so I'm gonna try to be brief, but we've done a tremendous amount in this short period of time that I've been here. And not, not just because of me, there's hundreds of people that are involved in working on these various components. 
But the first thing that happened was the Courtyard Transitional Center in downtown Santa Ana. Anybody take a bus out of the Santa Ana Transit Terminal? When it was a terminal, yes? Okay, it is currently a transitional shelter for homeless individuals. And it is serving about 400 in overnight safe sleep program and then about 700 people a day coming in and out to access basic services and amenities, meals, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served there by our, a lot of faith-based partners, civic partners, um, a lot of different community groups that are working with CityNet, which you'll probably hear about in a little while. So that was a very significant response to a crisis going on in the Civic Center of Santa Ana. When I first arrived, there were 461 people encamped in the Civic Center between the County of Orange and the City of Santa Ana. Um, I was reading in the paper that people didn't want to go to jury service, that people were concerned about going down there. Um, I can say that we've worked with the healthcare agency and the outreach and behavioral health um, folks to go out and survey our progress from when, when the courtyard opened to where we're at today. And let me just share that there were 461, as I mentioned. The courtyard opened on October 6th. There were 192 in November of 2016. Then it went down to 138 in January, down to 138. And then we just counted uh, a couple, well, in April, it was 156. And in October, again, just last week, two weeks ago, 190. So our population's kind of going like this and it's trending upward again. Um, what we experienced when we opened the courtyard was folks that didn't want to go into service, didn't want to go into health. We saw a lot of migration to the Santa Ana River Corridor, which didn't have a lot of people two, three years ago. Um, so then we opened Kramer. The Kramer site up in Anaheim was basically a bunch of cities put some money together with the county to create this program. It's 200 beds, multi-service center, in the works for close to 10 years. I know uh, Board of Supervisor Bill Campbell came to visit me in Long Beach. I was hosting tours with them on what we were doing in Long Beach back in 2007. So I know this was a long time coming. Um, the Board of Supervisors directed us to open it in phases. So we opened the first 100 beds and, the, and we're fully building it out. We should have the second 100 beds and the full service you know, component that it was intended to be in April or May of next year. So that is happening now and we've got 100 people there on any given night um, and that is serving individuals as well. So the board on July 1st hired um, <laughs> in Bradfield House, hired um, CityNet to come out starting July 1 on the flood control channel. Now we had healthcare agency outreach staff down there the whole time for probably a year and a year and a half prior to CityNet going down there. But because of this increase, we had to really do an, an intensive amount of work out there. And so with CityNet so far, and maybe I'm stealing your thunder a little bit, but hopefully not. Um, the success of these programs so far, I just want to give you some numbers again. The courtyard has housed 154 people in the one year that it was open. I want to say that that shifted the mindset of what people thought was possible, not just in the, in the community with the service providers and the people that were working together to make this possible, but the homeless themselves that two years ago would not have believed that having this program be open, that we would have this type of success. And I want to say also I'm very proud to report that 25% of the people currently living in the courtyard are reporting to work every day. So that is a key <coughs> component of that effort. Similar with Kramer. So Kramer, we've had what I think it was last I checked, 22 people have been permanently housed. We've got a number of people that are working. Um, on the flood control channel, we've exited since July 1st 100 people, over 100 people. But with the Sheriff's Department being out there, and some of you may have read in the paper about the Sheriff's <coughs> Department coming out and they had a press release, where they're seeing a criminal element within the homeless population. And with that, they've had either arrests or citations up to 180 since September 15th. So, giving you that, that's a lot of information in a very short period of time. 
But what I want to kind of share with you is that the county is moving very quickly to develop a system of care to serve the individuals in our community, our homeless individuals. Because in my assessment, I found that we had a fairly robust system of care for families, but our system for individuals was very limited. In fact, we had the uh, seasonal armories, but we didn't have a lot of it, kind of a smattering of other programs, but not a significant <coughs> system of care. So that was one of the things that I came out in my assessment, and we've been able to bring on board basically 500 beds in a six, six month period of time. Uh, so we're moving quickly. Uh, two other things I want to mention, and then I'll uh, sit down, is that in my assessment, I um, chose to break the county into service planning areas. So we've got 800 square miles. We can't be one point of entry for service, and, and people need to understand how to navigate that, that <coughs> geography, right? The county is very different in North County than it is in South County, than it is in Central County. So if you picked up the infographic when you walked in the door, um, that was something that we created to kind of highlight two things. Number one is what Karen Williams will talk about in the homeless count and kind of what the landscape is on demographics of homelessness, but also to kind of um, pair that with what the county's doing to address those numbers and the special needs of the populations that we've got. <coughs> so the service planning areas, um, we've been meeting quarterly, I would say, so South County, and I see some people in the room that have been to the South County meetings, where we've got cities, county, um, healthcare, law enforcement, affordable housing developers, a cross-section of stakeholders that basically are working on the issue or impacted by the issue, to really start to coordinate our efforts in smaller regional response systems. So if you're homeless in San Clemente, we're gonna send you to FAM. We've got Mary Perdue here from FAM. Um, you know, our, our Laguna Beach <coughs> Friendship Shelter is also a key hub for individuals. In Central, we're using the courtyard as a hub. Um, some of you went to an event uh, in Orange. The Family Care Center has become a key component for the family care system. And then in North, we've got the Kramer site. So two years ago, we didn't have all of these hubs but they're starting to emerge just through the development of all the work that we're doing, not just in the county, but in the cities and with the nonprofits and the developers. We're, we're formalizing our system of care and we're coordinating it in manageable regional chunks. The other thing I wanna mention uh, real briefly is that you know homelessness in the last three years has grown significantly. And it's not just about affordable housing, available housing and employment. There's correctional impacts and there's healthcare impacts. So in my assessment, I kind of introduced that concept where we have to build a system of care that responds to the needs of people that are coming out of prison, meaning the re-entry system, the pathway out of homelessness, and then for the healthcare system, the mental health, the opiate addictions, all the different things that are causing people to be homeless. And so I'll, I'll kind of uh, finish my comments by saying there's 2,500 homeless people in our 2017 January homeless count. There's 2,500 solutions to that as well. And I never want to categorize the population as being any one type of solution, one type of response. Um, that's why it's great that we have the courtyard available, we have Kramer available, we've opened our armories early. The Santa Ana Armory is now open. Um, and the reason for that is because we're decompressing what's happening on the flood control. We want to give everybody every option available that's in our toolbox. And so with that, I know we have two other speakers. Uh, that was a very quick introduction. <laughs> thank, thank you. Recently been published. It's called Homelessness in Orange County, the Cost to Our Community. And it was uh, sponsored by the Orange County United Way, Jamboree Housing, and University of California, Irvine. Uh, one of the folks working on that is with us today with David Snow and um, Rachel Goldberg were the ones conducting that study. So that's an impact study on the cost of homelessness right now on Orange, uh, to Orange County. Uh, David, uh, will you raise your hand for a second so people can flood you when, this, when we're done in here? Um, he can tell you how to access that. We will soon have that a link to that on the uh, 
Orange County Alliance for Just Change website. The other resource um, that many of us have seen is a 10-year plan to end homelessness. Now this, this preceded you, um, and we're about five years into that 10-year plan to end homelessness. Helen, I think you were part of that board that helped put that together. We appreciate that. Um, it's a marvelous document, and it too is available online. You just Google that phrase and, and you'll be able to find it. And um, I think between that document and the one David and Rachel Goldberg uh, produced and Susan's assessment, I think those are three necessary parts of your library if you're going to work on homelessness at its systemic level um, and, and to see what it is that's happening throughout Orange County right now. So what I would like for you, just before you are seated, to just tell us a little bit about the 10-year plan and how that relates to the assessment that you did, if, if you would be willing to do that. Sure. Um, and that's a great question because, you know, all across the country, and, and I think it was probably anywhere between seven and eight years ago, um, under President George Bush, uh, the son, um, and Phil Mangano, the Interagency Council on Homelessness was created. And what that was was a group that was working across all federal departments, primarily was HUD, um, the Health Health and Human Services Department, the VA and Department of Labor, primary to homelessness, um, created the 10-year planning process. And, and really the design behind this was to get diverse stakeholders engaged on the issue of homelessness. How are we going to solve it? It would not be nonprofits and faith-based and community groups by themselves. We needed government stakeholders. We needed a healthcare system. We needed the schools. Um, and so the 10-year plan was really to kind of create that diversity of stakeholders to respond to the issue of homelessness. It was never intended to be how I was going to end homelessness in Orange County by any stretch. That's not at all what my document was or what it is. Um, there were 28 recommendations in my assessment, um, and we've made a lot of progress on, on most of them. There's only a couple that we've abandoned and determined that they were things that we were not interested in pursuing. But for the most part, we've made a lot of progress in the last year and a half to improve our coordination and our response to homelessness. And it's very well aligned with the 10-year plan uh, because certainly there's key things that need to happen in order for us to do that. And increasing emergency shelter beds, we're doing that. Increasing permanent supportive housing, that's happening slower than the need, obviously. So thank you for that question. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.